can't believe I'm doing this. A wise being once said that stillness is good for the mind, but travel is good for the soul. And a trip to Morocco, a country of terracotta landscapes, even-tempered mules and tenacious people, will certainly prove this statement beyond a reasonable doubt. The fact that it's only three hours away from the blinding lights and artisan coffee shops of London is in some ways difficult to comprehend, difficult to conceptualize, but it adds to the mystique and magic of this not so far away land. So, when you touch down in the ancient city of Marrakesh, it's fair to say you'll feel a little differently, a strange mix of curiosity and apprehension, compounded by the reality that you're doing this all, well, alone. albeit just for the first 24 hours. But when the doors of your Riyadh swing open and you spot the steaming mint tea on the table, the flickering lanterns on the walls and the beaming smiles of your hosts, you'll know you've actually made a pretty good decision. I can't believe I'm doing this, if I'm going to be real. This is so unlike me. I think I've actually realised over the last couple of weeks and months where I've been doing a lot of self-reflection that I'm a lot less um, adventurous than I thought I was. When I look at my track record, um, you know, I'm not as adventurous as I like to think that I am. And I, I've made that like a part of identity that I'm adventurous and I try, try new things and I travel and stuff. It's like, you actually don't. I actually don't look at my track record. But I've um, arrived at the Riyadh after a really long, long day. But we got here safely. It's actually quite an okay flight. I absolutely really, really do not like flying at all. Um, don't like it. I've been worrying about this flight since I booked it, which was like three to four weeks ago. Like every single day I've reminded myself that I've got to go and take a flight and it just scares me. But even though, like, it was bumpy a little bit, like, it was actually, I actually, I think because I'd worried so much, like, I don't know, after you're on there for, like, an hour, you're like, oh, it's kind of okay. And I actually, weirdly, I don't think I've ever felt this way before about a flight, I actually found it weirdly relaxing at points. Don't know why. Just kind of did, like, looking out at the clouds and stuff, I was, like, quite relaxed at points. But, um, anyway, got to the Riyadh, okay, the Riyadh's really beautiful, very traditional, um, gorgeous so different to what I'm used to I've already heard the call to prayer um and I which is just I don't know I love it and I've seen like when I got off the hotel there was all these um everyone rides motorcycles well not everyone I've been here like one night but I'm seeing everyone's riding motorcycles like even like a whole family will be like on a motorcycle and there's like little children on motorcycles <laughs> um so it's just so different to what I'm used to I will also say that Moroccan hospitality is like, I mean, obviously I've only been to this one Riyadh, but the reviews online were like amazing when it came to the hospitality and like the service here. And already I'm just like, wow, <laughs> like nothing could be too much. You know what I mean? Like they just look after you. Don't really feel that way about London customer service. I can understand why people get stressed out in customer service roles in London, but this is very different. <laughs> I mean, having said that, the I thought the border people at the airport were, like, quite... were actually genuinely rude. So, <laughs> who knows? Maybe I'm just, like, I've had two polar extremes already. But, yeah, I will catch you tomorrow. Um, 
let's see where the day takes me. I've got breakfast tomorrow at 10 and then I've got, um, I've got a massage, I think. And then at some point I need to get a taxi to the joining point for the, the group trip, the group trip. But anyway, I'm tired and I'm being boring. So I'm going to leave you and love you and leave you and talk to you tomorrow. It's the next morning. I'm feeling pretty good. I actually had a surprisingly okay sleep, despite it being quite disjointed. Like I did wake up. Um, yeah, I woke up during the call to prayer, which I think, if I'm not wrong, was about 4 a.m. I don't know why I think it was 4 a.m. because I'm not sure I actually did check my phone. I don't know how I know that. I need to Google that to see if that's actually correct. But there was a call to 4, 4 a.m. or maybe it was 6 a.m. I'm re reading this book, um, In Such Tremendous Heat by Kane Day Fadipe who is actually a family, me family member of mine, which is why I'm reading it. Um, and I'm actually really enjoying it. I'm finding it surprisingly relaxing to read. It's a really kind of easy read, not in a bad way. It's just in a really kind of, it's a very smooth read. And I don't know, I just feel like I am transported to that situation and that place. So the book is about three women who are all of African descent and I think that every single one of them has Nigerian heritage and they've come to live in Singapore and basically it's the story and they all have different lives but they all know each other two of them are best best mates um and basically it's the story of a man who um comes to Singapore and he works in the same law firm as one of the women um he's also Nigerian and basically he just disrupts all of their lives in like really individual ways so he disrupts the life of one like professionally, one romantically, and then one in a kind of family situation. Um, and they all kind of navigate that. I do not read fiction. And this is fiction. I do not read fiction. Like, I, I don't even remember the, the last time I read fiction. Probably like, I want to say 10 years ago, I'm not joking. I only read kind of self-help or historical stuff. Um, because I just, I just got put off fiction because it was fiction and I was like, it's not real. So why am I like indulging in something that's not real? I don't know if you can see me actually. Can you see me? Me, me and fiction are not best mates, but I'm actually understanding why that fiction is so popular. Bloody hell, how an obvious statement, but you know. Because obviously I know the author, I'm kind of, it's kind of interesting to think like what's inspired some of this. Because like, I know that writers obviously write a lot of things that are true to them and true to their experiences and their views of the world so but it's kind of interesting because obviously I know her so I'm kind of like mm, I wonder if this was inspired like by something that happened or like it's almost like I'm getting to know more about her through reading the book anyway I should probably just stop talking So is it normal to feel slightly emotion leaving Riyadh? I think I had a tiny weeny little crush on the guy that ran the Riyadh, but I don't know if that's because he was just being nice to me, you know what I mean? 
so I'm already like anyway so I've just met my group um everyone seems pretty nice actually quite thankful that not everyone's in their early 20s because I was a bit worried about that um so that's good um, so we've just had like all the briefing of the like safety stuff and rules and just like talking about what's going to happen on the trip. I'm going to go to a Game of Thrones location apparently. Uh, I think in a couple of days time. So my mum's going to be absolutely frothing with jealousy once she learns about that. Because she is literally the number one Game of Thrones fan. I don't watch it because I don't have self-control and I don't know how many episodes there are. I can't remember but I worked out that was a fucking hell of a lot. And... Given that I actually don't have a job right now, me getting hooked on Game of Thrones is probably not a good idea. So I'm going to try and avoid it as much as possible. So I'm just chilling out in my room for a little bit. And then um, we are going to go and get some dinner. Um, Got to say, I'm absolutely filled with so much regret on how stupid I've been with money so far. And I've only been here a day. I've made so many easily avoidable money mistakes while I've been here. I don't even want to go into it because you guys will just be like, what's wrong with you? So we're gonna go and get some dins and I'll speak to you very soon. Bye. The subject of this story then became so distracted and overawed by her surroundings that she didn't record herself again. It's probably to everyone's benefit really. So, I'll take it from here with a few closing reflections. Most people agree that it's easier to enjoy life when you're abroad. You don't seem to be in that vicious cycle of chasing the next moment, of climbing that corporate ladder or competing against some ill-defined adversary. Most people agree that you're able to be present in a way that you're simply not when you're at home. And as the writer Eckhart Tolle explains, this is a very common, very real problem. Because the truth is, tomorrow never comes. The future never comes. Because when tomorrow does arrive, when it becomes your reality, it's just the present moment. And actually, there's something special about Morocco that reminds you of the power of being present. Maybe it's the children playing in the streets. or how its natural surroundings attack all your senses. The list goes on. Morocco certainly isn't perfect, nowhere is. And of course, Differing realities means not all of us feel we have the luxury of being present. But if you're lucky enough to spend a little time here, you might just find that sometimes a place like this almost gives you no choice. And whatever you've learnt or understood in that moment, no matter how hazy or ill-defined, maybe you can bring it back with you to wherever home is. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll be back to the usual program shortly. Just wanted to try something a little different. <laughs>